So this recording video is all about reporting on on recruiting, right? So the the, the job requisitions, the job, the candidates, um, and then also the time too, which is an important uh, dimension in reporting for recruiting. So now the main objects that you have in in recruiting, obviously everything starts off probably with a position, right? Um, and so based um, on a position, a job requisition is created. Now the job requisition has a, its own event here. So there's a job requisition event that is used to create the job requisition. The job requisition has um, a bunch of data on it. And you guys know how to look at the data on a job requisition. You go to any screen and do business objects details, object details and do job requisition and then you get knocked out with the number of fields on it so there's a lot of fields um, on, on on the job requisition so getting back to the drawing over here so we're on the job requisition clearly you got data on the job profile um, you also have detail detail on the job posting so that's when the job is posted into either internal or external um, job sites clearly you have recruiter um, data on the job requisition then also you have um, the candidates uh, that have applied to the job requisition it really goes via the link all candidates to job application so if we go here um, the related business object is job application. Now this is a bit of a misnomer. Job application is pretty much the same as candidate. Um, and so here's your links. I um, mean, here's your link uh, to all candidates. And cool. So there's your link to job application. Now this object has a couple of interesting fields on it as well. And it's these, um, these calculations, right? And so if I go back to the business object fields on it, and calculation, calculation. It has four calculations for time to fill, uh, different time to fill calculations. Uh, so one to four. Now these calculations are determined by the edit tenant setup recruiting. Um, and here you specify what's included, you know, how, how these calculations are done from what date to what date. And so here this the first calculation is job requisition completed to latest offer and the other one is job requisition completed to hire date and here are your options so you have different options here to use uh, job requisition your start date is completed or entered or job posting start date so that's also job posting or recruiting start date that also be on the job requisition and your end time are either hire date the job requisition fill date latest hire initiation date or this the offer date. Now, so those are pretty cool fields to use for time to calculations. Uh, and they're also on the job requisition object. Now let's have a look at a report. Here I have a report on job requisitions. Um, and here we have the data. So first of all, we have the job requisition data here. So job requisition, you can jump to that. And so um, it has all that data that's associated with the job requisition, right? So all of this, it's got your funnel, all sorts of stuff. So interesting, nice, interesting stuff. Interesting enough, it's got three positions assigned to it. And um, so it um, looks like three positions were recruited here. You can also see number of openings filled is three. Um, that's obviously probably because of these three positions. Then very important information, I have the hiring manager, I have the primary recruiter, uh, the job posting details. So here's your job posting to external careers and an internal site. So you can see that the details on the job for the job posting. And so here it comes up, job description, details, recruiter, etc. So that is your job posting and your external career posting is over here. And so that's, that's traveling up from the job requisition to the job posting details object. So blah, 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 and all that data. Yeah. All that information, all those insights. Uh, 
cool enough, right? So that's the job hosting. Here's the job requisition I made that actually created this job requisition. Have a look at that. Um, and you can see it's due date, the process history, and, and the steps and the approval steps it's gone through. So that's a job requisition event. Very nice. And now here we are all the candidates on um, who've applied to this job requisition and also the candidate recruiting status. And so here is offer accepted, offer accepted, offer accepted. So these people, these three candidates would have gone through the recruiting process till the offer accepted stage. Well, they would have, be, have an offer accepted and they would have been recruited. And here's all the information about that um, job application for that candidate to that job requisition. Um, very good. Then further information about the number of openings available. Well, I would have guessed there would have been three initially, but now there's zero left um, and the number of openings fills. Very important, this is all as of today, right? So this is, uh, the date is today. And this business uh, object and data source is not affected data. So you get the current status. And now here you have a calculation, the number of positions filled, um, and being three and the average time to calculation is six. Now it's using the system calculation two, remember. So calculation two is job requisition completed to a higher day. So probably the most simple version of the calculation. How did I define this report? So what else is opening up? You should always be going to job requisition via job requisition index. Yeah. So you go travel, um, use this data source uh, on, that, on the primary business object of job requisition. And so here we have it. Um, the data source is job requisitions index and uh, the primary business object is job requisition. Now, as I said, all this data is flat out uh, on the job requisition, right? The, Object, yeah, so clearly it's an object, the position, the hiring manager, the primary recruiter, da da da. Now, here, um, all candidates, I've just used this as at the, you know, I'm using the related business object because I have an advanced report here. And here's the candidate and the candidate recruiting status. I always find it's useful to build an advanced report to see the data that you're getting specific because you can jump down a level and see the data at the level below. Although I would say writing advanced reports is not really the objective of the analytics that we're trying to do. And then you're seeing over here, um, here's your number of openings available, the full, and right on the job requisition, here's that calculation that uh, work data delivers based on the definition. So that's really the um, job requisitions object and reporting on the job requisition. And let's get to the next object, which is Probably more interesting is so the job application, aka candidate. Now, the typical information that we look on candidate is you know, candidate name for start, well, then the source, you know, the job application source, right? And um, states the candidate. And we have other cool links. Um, so the the job application event, so that the event of that candidate applying to the job, we have a link was to that event and we have a link to its entire process history and I'll show you why that's really important. Then we have a staffing event. So if the person is on the job application event, they're ready to be hired, the staffing event hire will take over. Um, and if there's a hire event, you'll see the hire event against that job application for that candidate. You can attach questionnaires to the job application as well and access the data on that. Um, uh, recruiting status is really important. Yeah. So in recruiting status, as this job application skips through the various statuses, you have a stage, right? Basically the status and the timing status, right? So there's a lot of, you can do analytics on that. Yeah. This object, you can also access directly as opposed to doing by the job application, which you're going to access by all job application statuses. So we'll have a look at that in a jiffy. And then of course, pretty much cool. If everything goes well, we have a higher date. So let's have a look at all of that. Um, get rid of this, get rid of this. So here we go. Uh, this is the job requisitions demo. I'm gonna run this report and I'm gonna run it now. I'm gonna look 
look at these candidates. Yeah, I'm gonna pick up these candidates uh, that did the offer accepted. Uh, look, that's clearly not the one. There we go. We got my candidate demo. I just picked those candidates, and here I have the information about those candidates with so the candidate name. Pretty cool. We even saw that on from the job acquisition. We can access it. Then the source, um, you know, the, basically the candidate source website and job application source. You have other, and you have a couple of statuses here. I think it's internal, but it, it's it's the this job application application source will allow you to distinguish between internal and external candidates. Uh, here's the candidate stage, the current candidate stage, and we saw these candidates, these candidates were hired. So here on this status, their candidate recruiting status is offer accepted. But the candidate um, stage, the stage on the candidate yeah, now is, is, is a higher status. Here is the job application event. Uh, so that this is the event that the candidate used to apply for the job. Um, and pretty cool, it also has all of its process, right? So this process history is very, very important. Now, this is really what you're after um, to do reporting and specifically analytics for certain statuses. We'll get to that in a second. Then here's the staffing event. So um, status is higher. So the person that was hired. Here's your staffing event. You can jump to that, and you'll see it's a higher staffing event with a higher date. Very sweet. So here we have the higher date and all of its additional information. Now don't need that. Don't even know why we're in the report. Here, as I said, um, we have from this business object, we can travel via, via job application process status to the recruiting status. And so uh, I, you guys know how to find these links. I did it over here from finding a link from job requisition to job application. Um, and so I can show um, the report, um, the various stages, the recruiting stage uh, for that stat status and the start date and the time in the stage. Oh. So you can see here's the review. This thing obviously flew through, right? This must be an automatic event, right? So my data is not great here. Yeah? Um, I have a GMS tenant. Um, this is not great, but not great data, but it gives me an opportunity to analyze um, what's happening and show you where different dates actually flow in. Anyway, so you've got your review, your offer, and your hire, and your time and stage. Now, this is, becomes a little interesting because when you're looking at this information over here, oh, in addition, um, I got here, I, with a lookup related value, I have brought in the, the job requisition completed date yeah, and the hire date, yeah, so that's seven, um, the 18th of July, 2014, and then it's, oh, the 6th of August is the higher date. Yeah. And we saw the higher date when we had a look at the, at the, at the, higher, the higher event, right? So here's your higher date, 8-6-2014, and that's 8-6-2014. And your requisition date, I think, let me see if we still got that requisition event anywhere open. This is the job application. Now here we're just flying away to other stuff, other stuff, right? It would have been on this, on the job requisition, if I go to the job requisition event, bleh, I lost the access there. But you're seeing this is the 717. This is where a lot of stuff happens. I don't know what, what you, it's eventually decided that it's created, yeah? But on candidate, you see that 7, 718 is seen as the, date the requisition is completed, and it is 7, not 717, so one of these statuses, process eventually determined that it was completed. I think this, this is the last one. So let me just go back here. Okay. So we were here, right? So we have these two dates. Now, the funny thing is, you're gonna look at these dates and you say, oh gosh, yeah, check these process start dates, yeah, status dates are 2015, yeah. And my job requisition is 2014 and my hire date is 2014, right? So obviously there's a lot of jacked up data in here. Um, as I said, there's an opportunity to, um, to analyze it. 
Now, what you're going to do as well is say, hmm, that's interesting. What did I get for my time to hire? Now, my time to hire over here, the calculation of the worker days, it says it's, it's six days for those three. Now, you, we know that this time to hire calculation is from the job requisition uh, completed to the hire date. Now, when we go back onto the candidate record, now this, this is calculated at the requisition level. So these time two is at the requisition level. But now we jump down to the candidate. We're seeing, and um, this is 2014. This actually, actually, there's a calculated field that does a date difference between this. It's 19 days for this one, 19 days for that one, 19 days for that one. So how in the world did you get six? Oh. Okay, I can't explain that piece. This I can just say that this data was loaded with an EIB, and obviously. So you just sample data to get something in GMS for testing purposes over here, and it obviously ends up like this. But you can see where the different dates are. Right? So it shows you you can, um, let me see what else I'm going to explain now. Right, let's just have a look where all of the stuff comes from to about here, and then we're going to step into this. So I'm going to do kind of demo, and uh, this is how I access it. Um, so using the the data source job application onto the job application business object. And we'll be here now. So here, uh, the data source job application, the data source, the primary business object is all job application. And so here, flat on the job application, I have all of these data points. Now. So the candidate, the source, the app job application event, the staffing event, and this offer status is which didn't do anything for me. Um, but now I'm using uh, the job application um, process status. Uh, uh, that's now I'm jumping. Remember, this is over here when I'm jumping via this link to the recruiting status field. And then I get the stage, the recruiting stage for status, and start date, and the time in the stage. Okay, so that's right up to there. Here I'm starting with uh, getting uh, data onto the job application. Uh, basically, the candidate that I'm going to use for time to calculations. And that's a, a lot in recruiting has to do about time to calculations. So here is where I've got the requisition completed date. So it's a lookup related value on the um, job application. And it should look up the requisition and pick up the requisition completed date. So a fairly simple lookup related value. So that gets you the date, and that got us this date. Higher date, um, rather friendly, uh, was is right on the job application itself. Right? And so, if I wanted to calculate my own time to hire, or, or say so let's say requisition create date to higher date, I just do a date difference. Right? So here I do the date difference. Calculated field on job application that just subtracted those two, gave me, gave me the difference in days between these two dates. So now that's where I get my 19 days. So, so far, so good. And um, what you can also do, of course, is you can use the timestamps of this. Uh, object to determine other time to calculations. And so let's say you wanted to look time to offer, right? To the, when the offer was extended. Yeah? And to do that, um, you create a calculated field. What is the price? I it over here. Here's my offer date. So I get this date here yeah, from, from the offer, from the job application process status. And I do that with, um, and look up a series of calculations. So first of all, I'm doing a lookup related value on the offer status, yeah, and bring the, the status start date, yeah. Now this ESI is obviously on recruiting status. This is an uh, instance that I've raised up. We did an extract single instance uh, on job application, going by job application process status which is obviously based on recruiting status, and where I pick up, where I look for where the stage of status is offer. Right? So now I'm picking, essentially with this ESI, I'm picking up this um, status. Yeah? 
And so I get, I get the alpha status. So this is the, identify the, this is the alpha status. So I'm doing strike single instance. So now on the job application, I have that, um, that uh, recruiting status where Luke, it is offer. And of that, I can pick off the date, status start date. And then I can do a date difference. And again, calculate from uh, the recruiting start date, or job requisition start date, and to, to offer date. And so I get in my report result, um, 202 days for that, because right, 2015, this is where our data got messed up, right? So 2014 <laughs> is the requisition create date and 2015, so I get a boatload of data. Anyway, so this is a time to calculation of these um, job application processes status. It's very useful. I mean, once, as long as your stages are what you're looking for, this is probably an easier one to do. Now, I guess a little tr more trickier, right? Um, so, as I said, we have a pretty cool link to, from the job application to the job application event and its entire process history. So, when I look at the job application event, uh, job application event over here, as I was showing you earlier on, it's got a process history. Now of that process history, I can also do time to calculation, time to calculations for certain steps. Yeah? And what we're going to do is this the review candidate. I would like to know how long does it take to, for me to get to this review candidate um, step. And so, now I am probably going to get lost with all these screens here. Yeah? I am here, so here I've got the process history, plan out the process history um, for that candidate. So I've got this process history. As I said, I'm gonna take the information, I wanna get the date from the, the review candidate of the process history. The way I do that, as it gets a little more complicated because there's an additional step involved. I'm jumping a couple of objects deeper. So I'm doing a lookup related value to get the date, yeah? Um, so the, here's the created on. I'm getting the event record, yeah? So it jumps eventually on an event record. This is from this review candidate step, right? So the review candidate step is really one that gets that, that step that I'm looking for. Uh, and it's a lookup related value that's on the job application, yeah? And I'm looking from a job application event, right? I'm looking at the from job application to job application event. So it's job application to job application event to pick the right process history. Yeah, where was I? Um, exactly. Um, and now I want to get which, which is the review candidate step in that process history. And that is done with an extract single instance on the job application event, yeah, looking at its process history. So now I am on the job application event and looking at its process history. Um, and I'm gonna pick up the one where the review, the, the, the step as the step as re review candidate. Now there's a bit of a trick to this one over here. You can see this thing is, this is what it's called, step A initiation, right? That's got with step uh, override on dynamic business processes, which are the recruiting business processes. So finding this one is a little tricky because if you had gone over here and said, hey, uh, give me step, um, let's see, can you clearly doing well here in selection list. And value from this field, that's fine. And then I do a review candidate. I get boom, and you're like, oh my word, you know, not doing so well anymore. The way to find this is a little trickier. You get your data, uh, so you go back to your report here, report runtime. This is the thing you're after, uh, this review candidate, yeah, uh, process step. You got a process step. And you go on the event record and you go by the integration IDs to do the IDs and you pick up the workday ID 
And then you're very sure to get what you're looking for. And so now I'm just find where I am. So when I drop this thing in here, um, I get no matches found. Um, why do I not get no matches found? Because I'm not on the right thing. And let me go back here. What am I looking for? Going back. And the step, the steps review, sorry. I need to go here, instance, integration and view the integration ID. This is the work that I need here. Um, <laughs> yeah, I have something here. Lo and behold, I have the review kind of noise. say, okay, uh, then it does that big thing, right? Uh, and actually gets the name from the business process. Right? So let me just add it here and just go to that. So now once you have that step, right, you can do your ESI here. And now on the job application event of the process history, you have the single event that's that um, review candidate. Um, and then when you're on, you can raise it to the job application with a lookup related value for the job application event and pick up out of the process history that step. And once you got on a job application, you can get its date. Yeah? So job application on that uh, step, you can get the graded on and then you have the date. And so then you're back over here and then you just do another date difference yeah? to calculate the difference from the requisition to um, the review candidate date. And then that means, now if I can find out where I am. So here, yes, you have that this step date was created on um, 2-5-2015, and then you have the 202 over here as your time to. Okay, so yes, a lot to understand, a lot to process, yeah, but this really covers most of the reporting that you're gonna do in recruiting. As I said, a lot of it goes around um, on the requisition, accessing requisitions, accessing the data around the requisition, uh, candidates, job posting details. These time to calculations, as I said, if they work, it's awesome. If they're not work, then um, you'd have to go create them on the job application. On the job application, you Kind of looking at this is essentially candidates, right? Your accesses via the business process, uh, the data source, the job applications. Here, your source information. Here's the stage for the candidate. Here, are your event, right? The job application event with the process issue that really tells you what happened to that candidate, right? the, can the steps the candidate went through. Or you can go via the recruiting status field on the job application process status and get this time, time, yeah, your stage. And you have the, 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 time the person went into the stage as well was also on the, the candidate, the time the candidate went into that status is also recorded on there. Um, and then you've got the events in the state folder as well, you have a hiring date. Other ways to access this data, of course, by recruiting statuses, you can go straight on there to do some analytics over there. And that's pretty much it. Well, hope this helps.